What's up guys? Welcome back to The Home Slice. Now I haven't posted a video for a few weeks featuring an outdoors knife test and there's a reason for that and I wanted to sort of let you guys in on the process a little bit. Something that I've been thinking is that there's some really good destructive testing out there. There's things that you see on Dutch bushcraft knives and channels like that where they'll just wail on a knife, pound it through a frying pan, all of that stuff. And while I think that that is really, really cool and it's fun to watch, I thought that something that we're really lacking in the knife world at the moment is a normal use test that just stretches out the time of use until a blade fails. Similar to the way that Pete from Cedric and Ada will cut through a piece of rope until there's a measurable fail in the edge, I thought it would be cool to come up with some sort of test that does an outdoors kind of camping, chopping sort of test medium and then measures how long a steel or a blade can endure that at a given edge angle before it fails in some way. Now the tests that I first thought of with this would be to slice paper primarily because paper slice gives you an idea of whether or not you still have an apex and if you have any major chipping damage. So I've played around with kind of push cutting and slicing paper after I'll put in several hours of chopping on a blade to test that. The other thing that I thought would be really neat to test is whether or not there's still an aggressive edge there and that's because dual grit edge seems to hold an aggressive edge for longer than your average blade and I thought that a cool way to test that would be to cut up a tomato. Now when I started, I didn't think of all the variables that there are. There's different ripenesses of tomato, there's different blade lengths and weight. Actually the leverage that you apply in a chop is dependent on the center of rotation to the center of gravity. And so if that's further out, you're applying more leverage or if the knife weighs more, you're actually applying more leverage. So I'm trying to test knives that are about 12 ounces, nearly the weight of this knife, and about six to seven inches to sort of even the playing field of the leverage of impact. Anyway, I've been testing in the background for a few weeks. Just wanted to welcome some input for you guys to chip in on how you think it would be cool to fine tune this test. The first thing that I've realized is that the tomatoes that I pick need to be about the same firmness. And I've been selecting tomatoes that are pretty ripe. They're not too mushy, but they're not too hard. It's too easy to cut a tomato when it's hard and refrigerated. So I let them come to room temperature. I pick tomatoes that have maybe about three millimeters of squish on the outside of them, and then they're firm underneath that. So they're difficult to slice. The other thing that I've come to realize is that it's really important where on the blade you're testing. If you look at this knife, it's really clear where it's been worn away by repeated strikes. And that impact zone is really what I wanna test first. I've also noticed that if you use really light touch and kind of just allow the knife's weight to press on the tomato, it makes a difference versus if you really press firmly. And also I was thinking about testing the effects of stealing the edge. So at this point, I've tested a knife that has 1075 steel by the brand Ontario. I've tested this 1095 Crovan K-Bar Becker once uh, doing one day of work, which is three and a half hours of chopping, and then doing two days of work, I retested it, which is about seven hours of chopping. And in between there, I did about 10 minutes of batoning. I've also tested whether this holds an edge longer with a regular fine edge. In fact, right now it's actually just got a normal fine edge. You can see the nice reflection off of that. And I tested whether or not a uh, normal fine edge, which a lot of guys would put on a blade intended for chopping or push cutting, would last longer or the same or a little bit less long than a dual grit edge. Anyway, in just a second, I'm going to stop talking and play you a kind of satisfying montage of me slicing tomatoes and paper after each of these sessions of chopping. And I hope that you enjoy that. At the moment, I'm thinking the pass or fail of the test will be whether with light touch the impact zone of the knife can slice through the skin of a tomato in less than five passes. That'll be like our sort of pass fail criteria. And then we'll do a, additionally a paper test to check and see if there's clear edge damage at any specific point. 
and whether the cutting apex is still there. Beyond that, the videos that you're about to see are, are a little bit scattered because I was just t trying all kinds of different things to see what would be valuable data to put in it. So if you watch the video and you think of a way to test these blades that I haven't mentioned or haven't thought of, if you could leave that, leave your thoughts in the comments below. And hopefully before I launch into you know, a hundred hours of chopping. We'll make sure that we get really dialed in data that's helpful to all of you guys.
So I've been contemplating this data and I, I feel like I'm not really comfortable with how sort of noisy it is. So I think what I've decided is this. I think I've decided I'm not going to steal the edges. I think stealing does do something, but I feel like I'm not precise enough with those quick strokes to do the same thing every time. And so some edges will come back a lot and some edges won't come back as much and I think it's more technique. So. I think stealing is effective for some uses, but I just don't think that it's really something that I need to incorporate into the testing. I think the paper test really does sh show if there's an existing apex in the edge still, and it does show when there's chipping, so I think that I will do a paper test. And I guess with slicing the tomato, I think that there could be some valuable data there. The one thing that I notice is that there's only been one knife which still will cut with light touch on the impact zone and that k-bar becker i think i've done this test three times i've done it once in the background once for the first video and now once for this video and each time it seemed to pop the skin of that tomato even after the three and a half hours of beating on it so at this point i'm thinking we'll make the main test will the knife still chop cut the tomato in the impact zone after a full day or actually how many hours does it take to remove that i guess is the real test i'll probably also test the full cutting edge just to see if that's any different and then a paper test that's what i'm thinking at this point i'd still love to hear what you guys think about it please let me know down in the comments thanks for watching and for this time, I'll just say peace out from the home slice.